again to lovely Straka, Happy Land from Fairy Tale. Now we have our revolution, and everybody is wearing a blue ribbon. We will all live happily ever after. Perhaps. Excuse me, you don't mind? No, I, I was just... You don't remember? I said I would show you Slaka. Yeah, I'd like that that... I'd like that very much. Only today is a bit difficult. I'd turn the shower off. Better leave the shower. Maybe the room is bugged. It interferes with the signal. Maybe the room is bugged? Why would the room be bugged? What do you think Hogpo does these days, grow flowers? Hogpo? Who's Hogpo? Our state security police, like Stasi, Securitate. Nearly half our people work for them. Everyone followed somebody else. It took two people to be a person. One came in front and one went behind. Don't you think they kept up full employment? Do you like some clothes or is it better to be naked like that? I like it better, but you know they used to film through here once. <laughs> While you were... Cameras in the bathroom, bugs in the bed. If you like to make some love, you had to go to a plowed field. Well, that's terrible. Very cold in winter. Not so bad in the summer. No, I'm sure it's very nice. But really, I think I get to your clothes. Yes, definitely. They're, they're on the bed. Okay. Don't go away, will you? And these people, are they still around now? Everywhere. You know, you were followed from the airport. I was there, watching out. Followed from the airport? Who would do a thing like that? Even in your famous vest, you must have state systems to keep people down and make them feel afraid. But I don't see how I... Maybe you have friends from the past. Maybe you're just interesting. You look very interesting from here. What do you wear first? Usually my shorts. This is a very nice shirt. Who's this? Turnbull Asa? That's my shirt maker in London. I don't think I like being followed. Could I have my pants, please? Why do you dress so nice? Do you go somewhere? I'm going to meet your president. Oh, you go to the castle to meet our great writer, Princess. I hope you read our books. They're very queer. Oh, really? How are they queer? Our imagination is strange. A little bit magical. Here, I'll help you with your tumble. Quite a lot sexy. Nothing is what it seems. She likes always to write about things that are forbidden Dangerous. That's why you like her. But please take care with that one. She charms everyone. Not always for the best. So, now you are an official person. What a pity. I like you better than an official person. Without the clothes. Oh, when do I show you Slarka? That is if she wants it. Would this afternoon be possible? You know how that? Oh, you're so ignorant. A statue is out there in the square. I'll meet you there five this afternoon, yes? Here at the Godefroy de Bouillon Center in Brussels, European foreign ministers are meeting over the weekend to discuss widening the community. It looks like being an argumentative session, with a particular row over the admission of slime. The small Balkan Republic, which overthrew its Marxist leader, General Volkani, in a revolution last year. Now, Slaka has made a surprise application for EC membership, and the British are less than enthusiastic. I don't understand how we think of admitting these savage European tribes. 
I understood you wanted Slaka in the community. I don't mean them. I mean the British. Uh, the barbarians of, of Europe. I'm joined now by the spokesman of the British delegation, Michael Spearpoint. Mr. Spearpoint, why is Britain opposed to Slaka entry? Spearpoint? Why did nobody tell me he was back in Brussels? We'll gladly hear the views of our admirable European friends. But the British position is that admitting Slaka would dilute the whole idea of Europe. They want to dilute the whole idea of Europe. But I thought Britain wanted to dilute the whole idea of Europe. Well, we do, yes. But we want to dilute it in a quite different way from the way our European partners would like to dilute it. No, Spearpoint. That man has always conspired against me. You know him? Of course. <laughs> and six months ago, he was Director General of Agriculture. And he conspired against me then. Now he returns to London and he conspires against me again. Deputy President, uh, suppose the British succeed. Nobody will listen to the British. They never do. They are the odd men out of Europe. Every time they protest, it strengthens the other 11. Everyone else in favor. The other member states. The entire commission. Well, perhaps not the entire commission, Deputy President. What do you mean? By never gossip, you understand. Especially about a distinguished commissioner. But Madame Melchiori is not exactly a supporter. In fact, she made her opposition quite plain at your address the other day. <laughs> Madame Melchiori and Spearpoint. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are new here, Parson, or you would understand. When Spearpoint was in Berlimont, those two had a notorious affair. An affair? In Berlimont? <laughs> As a Frenchman, I felt I should tolerate it. As a European, I found it distinctly distasteful. Fortunately, I put a word here and there, and Pierpont found it wise to depart. Very proper, Monsieur Villeneuve. Now he returns to undermine commission policy. If those two were conspiring, would it not be totally outrageous? Indeed, Monsieur Villeneuve. <laughs> Everything in Berlin should be open and above board, n'est-ce yeah, pas? Exactly. Open and above the board. So, Parson, do you think, using as much discretion as possible, you could find out what is going on between them? Uh, Dr. Dorfman? Yeah. Uh, Felix uh, Steady. Uh, Steadyman, British Embassy. Uh, heard you were here. Welcome to the con country. Thank you. Uh, may, I, may I join you? Oh, please do. Do you like some coffee? No, tea is, is what I prefer. Do you know Starka very well? Oh, been here for yonks, actually. Should have been moved on to something more elevated, perhaps the ambassador to Burundi or something like that, but you, you know what it's like in the... the Diplomatic. Also, the fact is that my wife's a bit of a... Braver. And I, I, I've got a bit of a... a, 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 a st stutter? Stammer. So, here, here, I, here I stick. <laughs> Please. What do you do in the embassy? I'm responsible for English as a medium of international communication. Really? Yes. You see, all the uh, teachers who used to teach Russian now uh, now teach English, and I run a program called Tea Time. Tea Time? Uh, teaching uh, English abroad to, uh, to incorporate a middle Europe. I have a pro program called Coffee. I suppose that makes us rivals. Well, possibly. Who are you uh, uh, dealing with? The Minister of Trade, Mr. Tankic. <laughs> oh, Tankic, eh? He's very fly fellow. You mean he's unreliable? Well, you could say so. He asked me for uh, 50 Land Rovers, a dozen ro ro rocket launchers, and 20 like aircraft. Uh, and that was just for teaching English in schools. <laughs> really? 
Well, frankly, uh, uh, Dr. Grossman, the, uh, the, the Slarkin economy is in a t total, total bloody mess. Yeah, I had a look through the figures. And... Yeah, uh, this is a five loss note. Uh, uh, depending on any of their uh, 17 different uh, rates of exchange, you could either buy a, bo a box of matches or you could buy a three-piece three suite. But there's nothing in the shops. They haven't in invented shops. And a normal trading would come as a very great surprise to them. Well, Mr. Tunkish is very keen to cooperate. Yes, the, the problem is it all goes into his, uh, into his pocket. No, I well, wouldn't touch him with a ba ba barge pole. How about Professor Romrum? He seems very honest, a member of the Academy. No, wouldn't, wouldn't touch him with a barge pole either. Thank you for your advice, Mr. Steadman. Not at all. I knew he was going to have tea with, with uh, Bunchy and me sometime. Stop the door, Smith. Ah, maybe you take a little something for Mr. Sankey's secretary. I know that Her Majesty's uh, government will Mr. wish to take full cognizance of everything that the French delegation has said. However, I now wish to propose a motion with which I know we can all concur. Lunch. And here in Brussels, European foreign ministers have just broken for lunch after a morning of bitter wrangling about widening the community. Michael Spear points, considerable disagreement. Not at all. They all wanted lunch. But surely this morning everyone was at daggers drawn. Not with each other. They all agreed with each other. But not with the British. Aren't we the odd man out yet again? Not from our point of view. From our standpoint, the other 11 were the odd man out. So once again, Britain is provoking a crisis in the European community. I can assure you, Britain will never shirk a crisis when a crisis is necessary, especially in the European community. And now, if you'll excuse me... Of course. Mr. Spearpoint, thank you very much. For Europa Channel, this is Mark Rogerson in Brussels. So, Michael, what are the British up to? Up to? Nothing. The British are just like you, Gianna. They object to slark an entry on principle. Oh, today? Why? Because it would shift the whole community further east. The next thing would be Hungarian regulations about the size of a loaf of bread. Serber Croat rules about the noise emissions of your lawnmower. Uh, come by you see, Buble. Besides, it would spell the end of tea time. Oh, and what is tea time? Teaching English abroad to incorporate Middle Europe. The British can't afford to lose it. Oh, I see. You know, Michael, once you were a good European, and now you go home and you become just another of those British chauvinists. Why do you build a channel tunnel if you don't believe in anything on the other side of it? Frankly, my dear, I couldn't care less whether Slarka gets in or not. On the other hand, I do want my K. Your K? What is a K? A knighthood. Sir Michael Spearpoint. It's the British way of rewarding those too old to enjoy gratification in any other way. Mind you, I'm not too old to enjoy gratification in other ways, as I hope you'll let me show you what's so funny. You know, you're fighting for your tea time, and Villeneuve is fighting for his coffee. His coffee? That's what his special fast-track fund is called, I found out last night. What do you mean, his special fast-track fund? You know, le train grand vitesse. It rushed size speed across Europe. It doesn't stop for anybody. This is the Fond Grand Vitesse, a super gravy train, Michael, worth a hundred million dollars. A hundred million? And they've chosen Dorfman to drive it. It doesn't make sense. He'd cock the whole thing up in a week. Cock up it? You think so? I know so, especially if we throw a few hurdles in his way. Oh, you mustn't do that to poor little Dorfman. Poor little Dorfman. He's about the worst thing to hit Europe since the Black Death. Oh, 
What a sweetie. Do you like me to arrange for you to go in? Please, go in. <laughs> hey, hey, Mr. Europe. <laughs> well, now, the real talking starts, eh? Now, I hope you looked at our trade figures. Yes, I did, Mr. Pankic. Never mind. They will look better after some rot today, eh? <laughs> they, everything is always worse when you are sober. <laughs> now, come in. <laughs> Here, from there. To your lovely eyes, my friend. Mm. <sighs> now, before we start negotiation, please explain me one thing as a friend. <laughs> what is capitalism? What is capitalism? Don't say that Karl Marx wrote a book about it. He never made a penny. <laughs> and don't ask me to read Adam Smith. He is coming here next week eh, with all his institute. <laughs> well, I'll try to explain then. Capitalism is really the operation of the free market. <laughs> Everything is free. No, not free. Free to be more expensive. My secretary is a little stupid. That is why she's my secretary. <laughs> Very sorry. No, no. You make it clear that we must use examples all can understand, eh? Like water. Now, here in Slacker, water comes from the sky. Hmm? God, or Marx, <laughs> or whoever is up there these days does his business and it rains. Our peasants take this rain from the wells and they pay nothing. Yet, in England, the famous Thatcher found a way to make water very expensive. Even to sell it in shares at the stocking exchange. <laughs> Yeah, you see, the important thing is to assume that water is a product, like everything else. But you see my problem. If I become European, I must make these ignorant peasants pay for what they get now free from it. Huh? But they are so backward, they don't like it. You tell me how to do it, I will believe in capitalism. It's really very simple. You add services and value. Services? Hmm? Value? Let's take a sausage. I'm sorry, I don't have. Oh, you see, so stupid. But what's not the example, Vero? Please, one sausage. So if you buy it from a stall in the street, you pay a very low price. But if you buy it in a nice restaurant from a pretty girl, <laughs> the price is much bigger. And why? 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 Because now you pay the sausage and the pretty girl. You add value. <laughs> Then you throw a vase of sausage and kiss the pretty girl. Put up for capitalism. But you mean you pay extra for everything? Of course. You see here in Slacker, we have been doing this all the time. Only now we can simply admit it. <laughs> Madam Commissioner? I hope I don't find you in the middle of an agricultural problem. No, you don't. May yeah. I? I'd just like to raise with you a small official point. Of course. Madam Commissioner, you know, when I came here to Berlin, I understood there was one golden rule a European official must become a European. Yes? The Spaniard must become more than the Spaniard. A Danish become more than a Dane. Even I, the Frenchman, had to become more than a Frenchman. Yes, that's the rule. Indeed, every commissioner must swear an oath to this effect. Yes, I know. Why are you telling me? Hmm. Well, my attention has been raised to a very grave matter. I'm told that certain people in agriculture are opposing our policy on Slaka. Also, some of those people have an intimate relationship with those who wish to undermine the commission policy. Who wishes to undermine it? <laughs> it's very clear, I think. The British, and especially the representative, Mrs. Pierpoint. 
Monsieur Spearpoint doesn't work for the commission anymore. He has new masters. And I cannot see how you're permitted to interfere in his private life. Really, Madame Commissioner? He may have new masters, but I think he has all mistresses. And I rather understood you interfered quite a lot in his personal life, even as recently as this lunchtime. Who told you that? We all have ears. Mm -hmm. But some are bigger than others. Is it Larson Parson? I'm afraid Mr. Parson is determined to undermine agriculture in the interest of external trade. This is the new Europe. The great farming age is over. But uh, there is another rule I should remind you of. The commissioner, you know, is not appointed for life. What are you telling me? I merely suggest, Madam Commissioner, that you do not ally yourself with this man who is undermining our commission policy on Slaka. A policy I'm determined will succeed. Really? And why? In the interest of a greater Europe. And those are your only interests, is that? What else? And um, if you have a little influence with Mrs. Pierpoint, and I think you do, then you might remind him he left behind an interesting record of his activities in Berlimont. Certain matters with secretaries and so on, a check a million dollars to Bulgaria that was never resolved. It would not be good public reading. Perhaps you could talk to him. N'est-ce pas, Madame Commissioner? It's all right. I will talk to him. And I count on your support for our policy on Slaka. If I ever find out what it is, yes. Thank you. I always felt we worked so well together. Maybe we should dine sometime. Well, now, you have seen all our trade figures. Maybe you like now to discuss them. Professor Randy Lancer. Well, I have to admit that if we are aiming for a free market, we are having some very large problems with this. The import-export situation, for example. Exports, we have three. Beetroot, grey shoes, brown shoes. Yes, but what kind of shoes? Sports shoes, fashion shoes, no. leisure no, no, shoes. No, no, no. Real shoes. Like these. <laughs> of course, the design is not so good and the machines are old. But we will buy you new ones when you give us all your aid. Yes. But the aid... Ah, now you are talking aid. Why don't we tell you what we like to import? Fast cars and videos and uh, Donald Duck knickers. Uh, computers, satellite dishes, machine robots. High quality condoms. <laughs> also Land Rovers, light planes and rocket launchers. When do we start? More road with me. Mr. Tankage, uh, the more I see, the more I realize that to transform the Slaken economy, you'd need a miracle. My friend, in Slaka, all things are possible. This is our castle. Once we hated it, of course. Our oppressors lived here, Casimir of the Square. He liked to bring our women to the castle for his pleasure and throw our men down the waist. That is not the pretty. His preference was the opposite. Boris the short, a little bit nicer. He tortured the Turks and built the university. And here, General Bulkani, 
You know of him, I think. And after the revolution, what happened to him? Oh, he tried to flee. Don't you remember? They caught him at the airport dressed as a peasant woman. Also, his wife, Madame Irene, dressed as a peasant man. Now, they are in prison, and maybe one day we will try them. And there were some more Vulcanis. Oh, the little Vulcanis. Vimo, Minister of Science, and Vibor, Minister of Culture, who never in all his life read a book. Vulcani believed in the great Marxist principle, the leading role of the family. They all managed to escape. So all his political were Vulcanis? No, one was not. But now, I am proud to serve a great and a freedom-loving president. I think she awaits us. This way, please, and uh, do not expect a great protocol. Our president is just a little informal. Dr. Dorfman, Madam President. Oh, my dear, how are you? Sit down, you must be very tired. No, not really, Madam President. You have come all the way from Europe to help us. The good prince has come to the castle. <laughs> I'm not exactly a prince, Madam President. We have come from a great kingdom to make us an alliance. Really, you should marry my daughter. But I don't have one. You could marry Tankic instead, perhaps, but I don't advise it. <laughs> so, will you let us in? Naturally, I shall do everything possible to assist you. Of course. We are very charming. But I'm afraid there are always lots of procedures and protocols. My dear, I know. I have lived in this world forever. But if we make good Democrats and a nice economy, then will you let us in? Well, it is not for me to decide, you see. You have to win the support of all the member states. That isn't easy. The British are objecting already. Oh, don't worry. We can be very nice when we try. And then there's the problem with the timetable. No country can come in before 1992. And then they're the ones who are negotiating already. Like Turkey, EFTA, Malta, Cyprus, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Poland. You know, it is like queuing for sausage. You wait all day. When you arrive, the shop is empty. How long? turn of the century. This century? The next one? Oh, no, my dear, too long. These are just uh, official statements. Always there is a way around the problem. Matters can be arranged. We a little... <laughs> well, not in the European community. I think so. Monsieur Villeneuve said... Take no notice of Pankic. He's used to dealing with the Russians. Of course, my dear, we do things properly. Enough. Come out onto the balcony with me. I want to show you Slaka. They all came. Artila the Ham, Suleiman the Magnificent, Boris the Short, and now Dorfman the Market. Yes, I realize your past is not easy. Here we know that freedom is fragile. And still in my country, there are many hardline people who only wait to see me fail. Perhaps you have met some of them already. No, I don't think so. You know, you remind me of Prince Stupid. He thought a world that was always good, and he tried to make it so. For generations, we have dreamed of freedom, and now we have it. But only you can make it last. So tell me the truth. Prince Stupid always tells the truth if you're going to heaven. To tell the truth... The economy here is a complete disaster. To save it, you would need a miracle. Only a miracle? Don't you believe in that? Well, unfortunately, the age of miracles is over. Miracles are not easy. That's why they are miracles. I know Europe is like heaven, hard to get into. But here we say, to enter heaven, you only have to know the saint at the gate. You know our patron saint, St. Saint Valdepi? Yes, I think someone's mentioned. He has a silver tube in the cathedral. I'll show you sometime. He made a miracle. Founded our nation, our language. Without him, we would not exist. Dear Saint, my dear. 
All we need is one small thing. Full membership of your herb now, of course. And my people will love you. And they will make you a silver tomb if you like. <laughs> I hope that won't be necessary. Listen to me and make me a promise that you will try, try to make a miracle. Yes, I will try, Madam President. Good. Oh, you are wonderful, Prince Stupid. I love you. Now, go and tell those others what we have agreed. Full membership now. And then come with me to the opera tonight. I have a seat or two for my friends. I think you like now, President. Oh, yes, she's charming, delightful. Also clever. Yes, probably. Tell me, is Slark a very religious country? Really, it was forbidden under the Marxist regime. Mm -hmm. People keep telling me about St. Valdopin. That was different. He suffered so much to create our nation. His death was horrible. Yes, the pagans caught him and with their swords, they chopped him into very small pieces. Chopped him into pieces? Make a mince of him. Like a McDonald's hamburger. Oh, He was the nation's great martyr. That is why his tomb is in the cathedral. A very small tomb, of course. Yes, I can imagine. Don't worry. It all happened in century 14. It doesn't happen so much now, Mr. Market, I was just thinking perhaps he does not like to come. No, no, I liked to come. It was just a bit difficult with Mr. Tunkic and the president. Oh, still he wears his official clothes. <laughs> what an apparatchik. Look at him. Well, I'm going to the opera tonight with the president. Oh, our president. Such an honor. Then I suppose you do not really have any time for me to show you a little of slacker. I do, of course I do. Two hours exactly. I will take a stopwatch. No, really, I'd like you to show me. So first, our great national hero, Rothbard. Ah, yeah. In 1848, in the revolution, he recited his poems on a horse in a battle. 
Of course, they shot him. Well, you should read the poems. So over here, the Institute of Marxism and Leninism. Now it's Marx and Spencer. And the towers beyond the Cathedral of St. Valdepin, our great nation founder. That's the one everyone wants me to visit. Do you like to, or do you prefer a beer? A good choice. Valdepin is here forever. The beer comes only on Friday. You don't like it? Mm. Well, you're lucky to get some. We still have many shortages, even with a new president. I expect she impressed you. She's very clever. Mm, she's charming. I said clever. Man, what is the matter with you? For centuries, you say women should not govern. And when they do, you fall in love with them and let them do anything they want. Now, Slaka falls in love with Prince. Why not? Only they don't notice. Their wages fall, their jobs disappear. The beer is pissed. Yes? I suppose it's because she's courageous, like Hrothdag. You think she recites on a horse? <laughs> In my country, in the hardline days, we had something called courage with permission of the police. They put her in prison. But her books were everywhere. How? She and the regime were... Our country is governed by a witch. See how she's charmed you. What does she make you do? Well, I suppose I didn't promise, but... Ah, oh, now it comes out. What? To get Slaka full membership of the European community immediately. Also, all you have to do is convince all Europe, the Russians, I expect, the Americans, but they will listen to you, Mr. Market. Mr. Market has talked to a witch. Yeah, well, of course, full membership doesn't quite mean full membership. Yeah. Associate, maybe. A consortium of the Balkans. A consortium of the Balkans? You must be joking. We'd knife each other to death in half an hour. And you said immediately? Of course, immediately doesn't mean now. Maybe in ten years, but nobody can come in now. It's just not possible, not in all realism. I'm sure they'll understand. I don't think so. In Slaka, we're all tired of realism. We've had too much of it. And your president, she will be so disappointed. I don't think you want that. She admitted herself it would need a miracle. But you still expect you to make one. Oh, Hans, how did you get in such a mess? You must be very innocent. I just want to do the best. Well, there's only one answer. There is? Yes. I must teach you how to make a miracle. Come on. The European Foreign Minister's meeting in Brussels broke up in confusion this afternoon after the British Foreign Secretary claimed that government in Slarko was totally unstable. He's demanding a ban on all European aid until Slarkan affairs have been investigated. Well, with me now is the Deputy President of the European Commission, Jean-Luc Villeneuve. Mr. Villeneuve. Monsieur Villeneuve. Monsieur Villeneuve. Democracy in Slaka, is it unstable? <laughs> of course not. This is a canard invented by certain persons to disrupt the European consensus. I have excellent contact in Slaka, may I say. And they assure me there is no evidence of this. None at all. <laughs> In fact, Slaka is as democratic as Britain claims to be. And in time, our initiative there will continue. Mr. Villeneuve, thank you very much indeed. You have a lovely apartment. Thank you. You lend your love to a good Sam property company? <laughs> no, you are lovely too, of course. It's just that I My thought... apartment is nice. I was fortunate. Now, shall I teach you this miracle? Oh, I thought this was it. <laughs> Better. No, that was just the beginning. Now, how to make one miracle? First, you must understand that our country was ruled by one man, famous and cruel. Uh, General Volcani. General Volcani liked only flattery. The people around him called him the savior of history. Some said he was the greatest man on earth since Jesus. Others complained even this was too modest. Now, shall I tell you why? 
the slack in economy is so broad? No, because the factories don't produce, because the resources are not managed properly, no. because... The... Because General Volcani was so rich. Go and see the palace he built himself. They call it the Volcani Hilton. You heard of Madame Irini Volcani? She loved shoes. 10,000 pairs in her wardrobe when she was arrested. They found the shoes, but not the fortune. What fortune? Millions of dollars Volcani put away from his country. This man who despised capitalism stored all his money in the banks of Europe. Mostly in Luxembourg, I think. So, do you like it, your miracle? Yes, I, I just don't understand. Oh, Mr. Market. That money is many millions. And it belongs to the people of Slack. If you can unfreeze it and bring it back to us, then your economical problem is solved. Mm. Do you like that? I'm almost a witch. Wonderful witch. Uh-huh. Mm. Aren't you due at an opera or something? Oh. Laszlo will be at the hotel any minute. I'll see you then tomorrow. That's Rob that. Eleven? My shorts. Oh, no. What's wrong? That old black cat, it follows you again. What do they want? Maybe they want you to do something in the street. <laughs> Thank you, Foreign Secretary. I, I do believe we made our point. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Uh, here we go, indeed. <laughs> Would you excuse me? Of sir? course. Ah, <laughs> oh, my dear. Would you care to make an old man very happy? Thank you. You've just done it. This is a private reception for the British delegation. Oh, Michael, I might have the wrong party. So many British ambassadors to Brussels. One to Belgium, one to NATO, one to EC. Which one is this? Belgium, as I suspect you know perfectly well. Your invitation is for NATO. Oh. Why have you come? I need to talk. Is there somewhere a little quiet? Over there. Come on. All right, Gianna. What? You know what you've done? For days now, I've been trying to work out what Villeneuve is up to in Slacker. He sets up this great fund. He hands it to poor little Dorfman to spend. Why? Exactly. Why? I don't know. But I know there has to be something, some fix, some kickback, some deal. Then you come along and interfere. And what happens? He knows we are after him. And he fights back. Let him. I don't work for the bugger anymore. He threatened me today. Really? And he threatened you. Me? How can he threaten me? He has a file he's prepared to use. Fumbling secretaries, Michael, giving a check to the Berlemont Super and he's spying on us. Isn't this all rather public? But you're worried for your little kid. You won't have it if he opens his file. You better worry about Villeneuve. That man is dangerous. Oh, here you are, spare point. PM's delighted with her, you'll be glad to hear. Oh, I see you find yourself in very attractive company. Uh, yes, may I introduce... Appleston Penhurst, Junior Minister, British Foreign Office, just flew in. Good evening. Gentlemen, Jody. No doubt an attractive woman like you would never dream of working for a living. Uh, wrong. I'm the Commissioner for Agriculture in the European Community. Oh, sorry. Foot in it. 
It always happens to world-class diplomats when they get together. Um, get me a drink, would you, Spearpoint? What would you like, Miss Melchiorne? Uh, champagne, please. If you say so, Madam Commissioner. Yes, well, she already did. Um, and get the same for me, would you please, Spearpoint? Um, I was just thinking about the gastronomic self. I was wondering whether you might know of someone a bit, um, special. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Panhurst, tell me, why are the British so against Laka? You know you're making a big mistake. Possibly. We often do. Those people in Slacker, they love everything British. British style, British clothes, British language, even British humor. Let the EC open up the free market and your trade would expand enormously. Yes, uh, unfortunately the foreign secretary is quite obdurate. Remarkable man. Marvelous tactician. Brilliant mind. <laughs> there he is, over there. Oh, good lord! Dropping his drink on the floor. Suppose I could negotiate a compromise. Ah, I know you need certain concessions. Yes, but why don't you come and meet the foreign secretary? He loves to meet intelligent women. No, Your Excellency, it was Mother Teresa who helped the poor. Madonna is a pop star. Would you excuse me? I must take the champagne to my minister. I'm awfully pleased to meet you. I've been told you took a perfect Italian. Well, not actually perfect, but on poco. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe it. Dr. Dortmund, I think. Yeah? I am Plitlov, a doctor also of the academical kind. Maybe you know my small book on Ernest Hemingway and his hairy chested hero. No, I'm afraid of it. I am teacher of English here at our famous university, University Boris the Short, of course. You've heard of that. No, I haven't. I'm sorry. I'm waiting somebody. I know. Laszlo, who takes you to the opera. He says a story. Also, he is locked inside his bureau in the middle of a rather difficult affair. What? Yeah. However, he asks you to do me the honor to be your guide. My car is outside. There's no need at all to take the tram. Please, shall we go? Yes, I think so. You know our great opera, Vedanta Galvrop? He sings for five hours. In Slatan, of course. Also, last act is missing. But all worth it, very definitely. Sado. Well, this is my car. Get in quickly, please. There is great nippiness in the air. What a pleasure to drive you. And I know you will forgive my little rules. What do you mean, little rules? It will be quite all right. When Laszlo checks the desks, he will say you've gone to the opera already. Of course, I think so. If you don't mind, first, I'd like to make a few little plans for you. What plans? Very much to your taste. Some friends of mine, nice people, they like to work with you on an international project. You will meet them soon. I will arrange it. Also, my very nice daughter. I don't want to meet your very nice daughter. I want you to take me back to the hotel now. Please, for you. Don't open it now. Inspect it at your hotel in your best leisure. What is it? A package, you see? A package to help you make a package. <laughs> An important commercial venture conceived by someone not so far away from you now. I'm here to represent Europe. I don't engage in commercial ventures. Take me back to the hotel, please. They followed you there at your hotel. They're back again. They are everywhere. Hold tight. You're mad. You don't want to meet them, I think. They are not nice.
You see? They went by. <laughs> they are fools. Are they hopeful? I expect. If they come back, just say you're my relative, the cousin of my aunt. I, I don't know what you think you're doing. Don't worry now. Everything is quite all right. All you have to do is go through that door, climb over the wall, and you have no problem. The opera house is on the other end of the street. C climb over the wall is better, yes. They may come back. What do you say in English? They might come back. <laughs> but you're crazy, Mr. Plitkoff. Dr. Plitkoff. No, I am your friend. I will see you again soon. Dr. Dorfman! The packet! You quite forgot it! Now, all I ask is that you open it. Consider it. For me, your friend. Believe me, when you open, your eyes will startle. chit chat with you if you don't mind of course i no i don't we know you are an important foreign guest we want to be very polite to foreign visitors leave your tie alone Grigor. Oh. but in a foreign land there are certain laws may i see what is in your packet dr dorfman oh, oh this mm -hmm. this is just something given to me by... we know but you don't mind if i no really i don't know what it is i don't want it i'm supposed to be at the opera with your president perhaps oh Grigor. What is this? An icon. An icon? An icon. An official national treasure forbidden mm. to export. Dr. Dorfman, will you come in our car, please? Of course not. I'm, I should be at the opera now. Come in the car. Please. You can't do this with me. I, I represent Europe. We change British policy. We change British policy. We What's that? Uh, the mannequin piece? I know exactly how he feels. Ah, ah, ah. 